to the Guitarist Guru series. On this session, we're going to continue working with our E minor blues scale and E pentatonic scale that we looked at before. Uh, I'm going to extend the scale this time, i.e. add some more notes I, or go into the, what we call the second octave of that scale. And also we're going to start looking at some riffs that you can play within those scales. So I think we'll get cracking. So first things first, let's go back to our minor pentatonic in the key of E. Uh, last time we looked at this position. Okay, so that is our first octave of our E minor pentatonic. So what we're going to do is we're going to continue that to make two octaves, i.e. it just gives us some more notes to play with as well. So once I'm on my second fret of my D string, that is my E, so what I'm going to do is then carry on up into the second octave. So the way we do this is, I'm going to use my second finger for this one, is we start on that root note again, so that now becomes the root note, and we go down to the G, open string, second fret on that G, down to the B, it's open, third fret on the B, and then we finish on the high E. So all we're doing now is just continuing the scale from here, like that. Now, if I put them together, i.e. the first octave and the second octave, we're still playing a minor pentatonic, we're just playing two minor pentatonic scales on top of each other. So it should sound like this. Okay, so that's what you've got. You've got the two octaves worth there. So let's have a look at the blues scale in the key of E again. So remember before we had open, third fret, open on the A, one, two, down to the D, open, and then again we finished on that second fret of the D string, which is my E note, and that's the root note again. And so to continue that on, I start again on here, so it starts, here we go, and then down to the G, open, second fret on the G, third fret on the G, down to the open B string, third fret again on the B, and then finishing on the high E. Okay. So this time you should get this sound. So you're now playing the blues scale in the key of E in two over two octaves. Again, finger-wise, go with what you feel comfortable. You may have noticed that I'm using my second and third fingers there, um, but go again with what, how, you, how it works for you for the moment. But just be mindful that you know the more fingers you can get to use, the more fingers you can use, the more likelihood your, your technique is going to improve much quicker as well. Um, and when, obviously, when you look further down the line, once you've mastered all of your basics here, you can take you know the more fingers you use, the quicker you can play as well. Right, so, okay, we've got a couple of scales there we can use, but how do we make them sound musical? Well, let's just take a few little riff ideas, and I'm going to start introducing some little techniques into your playing here. Now, depending on what type of the guitar that you're actually using to practice, um, obviously I'm using an electric guitar, which means that I can, I can bend the strings much easier than I would be able to if I was playing uh, a classical guitar. I'm not saying that you can't, but it's just a little bit easier because the strings are a little bit lighter to, to bend. All right, but you can still use these techniques and pick these up anyway, whether you can transfer them to your guitar, that's, that's something for you to have a practice with. But um, we're gonna go through just a few little riff ideas. They're not gonna be too technical, but hopefully they're ideas that you can go, oh, they sound quite good, they sound quite musical, and I'm sure you'll recognize um, some of them from, from music that you would have heard yourself. Right. So we're just going to start off with the E minor pentatonic. We're going to start with the lower part of the scale. So we're going to be using the one octave first. 
So a little riff that I find is quite useful as a bit of a staple riff is um, when you've got your open and your third fret, okay, and instead of me going down the rest of the scale, I'm just going to drop to the octave. So the open E, third fret on the E string, and then down to the D string at the second fret. Okay, and then I'm just going to move back to that third fret on the E string, and then back to the open. So you've got this little round. You play it you can get used to just jumping around the guitar now also what that does is it gets you to jump over the a string which when you're trying to practice it's always good to not necessarily go down on each string it's, it's jumping over and what we call string skipping and uh, that becomes a good little technique because it gets you you gets your right hand used to playing you can just see what's going on here you get your right hand very used to kind of just jumping over strings a little bit more so it's it's good for a little practice really. And do it without actually looking at the strings when you do it. It's always quite a good practice um, idea as well. So so I've got Okay, now the other thing I'm just adding in here is what we call a blues curl. Uh, and it's just a little bend. It's just a little it's a tiny little tiny little bend. So if I go to my third fret here, what I'm doing is just Putting it down, so it takes the pitch away from its normal normal position. Okay, now that's what we call blues blues curl. Uh, you don't have to do that, but it just adds a little bit more dynamic to that that riff as well. So. Okay, so that's one little riff you've got there. Um, we're just going to take that minor pentatonic, but now into the second octave. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to go backwards, or go back down the scale. So I'm going to start now with a high E, the high E string, open. Itself, I'm literally just walking back up the scale. Okay, and just getting used to really kind of just working backwards as well. So from there, I might I might go. Um, all I'm doing is just walking between those two notes there. some sounds that aren't necessarily scalic to, to the point that we're going up and down the scale all the time. I'm varying what the, the notes in between. So this little area here. Again, still sounds a little bit Chinese, but if you can play it against something, i.e. a backing track, um, which you can go on YouTube and you can have a look if you type in uh, E minor backing guitar backing track you'll be inundated with loads of backing tracks all you need to do is just stick it on in the background just play around with these scales and what you'll find is that these notes will fit nicely over that backing track and that'll be something we'll demonstrate a little bit later on but this is really just to get you get a little bit of freedom within those scales that you're playing all right now I'm going to be a bit sneaky to a point. I'm actually going to break out a little bit from this scale here at the bottom, just to show you a kind of a, a riff that you may well recognise using the minor pentatonic here. So I'm now going to start on the third fret of the high E string. Now actually, it's exactly the same note as the third fret on this low E string. So yes, it's still part of that scale, but what this is, is now going past our second octave of that scale. Don't worry if that kind of goes over your head at the moment, don't worry about that, but all you need to bear in mind is that note there is also part of the same scale. It's just going a little bit higher and we're starting to get a bit higher at the guitar. So if I play... You may 
recognise that riff uh, is from a 60s track, I believe. Um, Shaking All Over It's is the original song. Um, now, what I'm doing here is I'm actually adding another little technique here. So what I'm doing, I'm picking that note here and I'm just taking my finger off. I'm not actually re-picking that string, so I'm not going, I'm not going, I'm actually just literally going, just pulling that note. Now that note there, is, that's what we do there is what we call pulling off the note. Okay? And if you do that to the string above, do the same thing, and then that note. Pulling off of notes. Now the reverse of that is what we call hammering on. Now hammering on is where you literally your finger becomes a hammer. So you're not picking it, you're hammering it. And what I mean by that is again when you get to this this part of the riff, so I'm hammering that hammering that note on. So I'm being quite forceful with it. A bit like a trigger finger. Now, by having these little techniques, what you'll find is you're starting to add a bit more dynamic to your riff playing as well. You remember, you're still only ever playing the scales here, so you're, you're not doing anything too technical, but you can make these scales sound really good with some of these basic riffs. Right. Um, so you've got a couple of little riffs there with your minor pentatonic. There are loads, and the more you play, the more you'll just automatically pick some of these up as well. Um, so let's have a look at the blues side of things. So we've obviously got our blues scale. Okay, so let's start adding some of the blues notes in. So again, you've got you've got your little blues curl that I mentioned before. Okay, we could add our blues note if we did something like this. So we could start off. Okay, so that's a couple of little ideas there, um, just by using that blues note in there. So that's the lower octave. Uh, what about um, what about the higher one? So let's just try this one. Now there's no rules necessarily to this. You don't have to start every riff with the root note, i.e. the E in this one. You can start anywhere in the scale and I always, the way I look at it is that when you're practicing anything like this, if you can end a little riff um, back on a root note, so always focus back onto that root note, that kind of gives you a bit more grounding, that gives you an understanding of the scale, you understand the scale if you can get back to that, that root. But it doesn't mean to say you have to start on that note, on the root note. So for this riff, I'm going to do, I'm going to have a blues section, I'm going to start here on the second fret of the, the G, so it's going to go... <laughs> That's very bluesy in the sense it sounds it sounds it sounds nice when you do it nice and slow. So all I'm doing here is this second fret on the G, third fret, which is the blues note, open D, back to the third fret on the G, back to the second fret on the G, open on the G. What you're doing is you're heading back to that root note, which is the E there. So, okay. If you wanted to, you can add a bit more to that. You can go back to the lower part of that scale and maybe use the the uh, open E here, and then play that blues little blues curl back to that root root note. So you put them all together. 
Tonic scale and the blue scale together. Um, they, they do blur, so they do cross over each other quite a lot. So, um, and then from there you can walk on up the scale. So, so all you're doing is piecing little bits of riff together, and and from just the basic scales here, suddenly you can take it off into lots of different areas as well. Um, but it does take practice, and and what I would recommend is just using those scales together, combine them, put them all in together. As long as you've got all those notes in, in, in that area that you're, you're playing, uh, you'll find that you'll, you'll end up coming up with riffs yourself. Um, and try and push your playing and, uh, as, as much as you possibly can, but also try and get used to using more than one finger. If you're using more than one finger, it becomes a, actually a little bit harder. You know, you've got four fingers in your hand, so I don't expect you necessarily to use your, your little finger yet or, or your third to a degree, but if you can get one or two, those riffs fit quite nicely, all right? And then if you, if you want to add a little bit more into it, just to kind of really spice it up, you can, you can add what you had before with the... That little riff. With, so you can put all the riffs together, really. So you've got... you an idea that is a basic form of improvising so and, and that is uh, improvising yourself is a skill to, to pick up and learn um hope that hope that works for you i hope, hope you can enjoy that and i hope you can get your fingers around some of those little riffs so you've got just to, to just quickly recap you've got little blues pulling the string down all you're doing there is just literally just pulling the string down just giving it a bit of a wobble um be a bit confident on it then you'll get a good sound out of that so you've got a little blues curl, and then you've got your hammering on, um, sorry, you, you're pulling off, but you've also got a hammer on as well, so it's hammering the notes onto the, the string. So instead of re-picking when you get to the second fret there, you're actually hammering that note to make that sound. So hammering on, pulling off. Okay, good stuff. I um, hope you enjoyed and uh, I'll catch you on the next.